finish him. Kill the guy now. Grab the gun. Hit him. Uh -huh. What? Good. What is this? Good day, sir. You are watching Jackie Pan in my house. Who is King Kong, sir? Eh? King Kong. You, you've never heard of ACTV before in your life. ACTV is very educative, informative, and there are football sports there. There is entertainment. There are a lot of things you can You can even attend lectures here. All you know is watch all those nonsense artists and do, do nonsense or you watch nonsense on TV. Eh? Last night you almost came in bed with your fist. It's not me, sir. Eh? You, and you wake up every morning, the bed will be so rough like you've been fighting for food in your dream. Eh? That's really why you have F's in your courses like this. Special have, for you. I have V last semester. E, we eat five pounds for you. Very stupid. Oh, yeah, change that section to SCTV right now. And oh, boy, the baby wants to have the first boy. Eh? Stupid boy. Good afternoon, students. Uh, this afternoon, we are going to discuss the principles of speech writing. Earlier, some other lecturers that have come in here have discussed our persuasion in speeches. So, but besides the techniques of persuasion, there are some other principles of speech writing. There are some principles of speech writing which speech writers must acquaint themselves, themselves with in order to attain proficiency. In order to attain proficiency in the arts, some of the basic principles of speech writing include the principles of clarity, the principle of reader friendliness, the principle of accuracy, the principle of conciseness and the principle of due diligence. For a speech to be properly presented, all these principles must be adhered to. Otherwise, uh, the writer, the speech writer, will not succeed at communicating his views or his speech properly to the audience. Now, let's first of all look at the principle of clarity. What does that mean? A speech writer is expected to present his or her ideas in a very clear manner. Uh, this is achieved by choosing words that are short and familiar. If you do not choose words that are short and familiar to your audience, the audience may not be able to follow. Uh, for some of the things you can also do when communicating or delivering your speech is to use repetition, illustrations. For example, we are going to look at one of the speeches in the text we use in this class. And that's the text written by Mr. Adebiyi. If you look at speech number six, if you have your textbook there, sample speech six, we have instances of principle of clarity 
being observed by the writer of that speech. For example, if you look at repetitions, we have instances of repetitions in paragraphs line, paragraph five, paragraph line five, look at it, line two, paragraph five, line two, paragraph five, line two, in, I have also fought against anything which serves injustice. That same expression, or very similar expression to that, can be found in paragraph 6, line 1, and 8, line 1. Beside repetitions, we also have quotation in paragraph 10. Quotation in paragraph 10 of that same text. That quotation is in Peter, not Peter the Apostle, but Peter, the hero of the high wall pole entitled, let me take that again, Peter, not Peter the Apostle, but Peter, the hero of High Walpole Novel, entitled Fortitude. Wherein we have, it isn't life that matters, but the courage you bring to it. Now, we have made mention of repetition and the use of quotation. All these things are applied or used by the speechwriter to make the speech clear. Beside the principle of clarity, which you have earlier studied, what we are doing right now is trying to examine a speech where you, we have the examples of these principles in the speech. We also have the principle of reader friendliness. This is observed again in paragraph 4 of speech 6. In that paragraph, we have a combination of different types of sentences. And if you look at that sentence in that paragraph, that paragraph starts with, I have an unyielding, I've been an unyielding advocate of a federal constitution of Nigeria. I have all along with other leaders of this country, blah, 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 down to the word proud. The whole of that paragraph is a combination of different sentence types. But I know standing within those sentences, we have different punctuation marks. And all those punctuation marks are well put. We have commas, which signals a pause. We have full stop, which signals or we have full stops, which signal a uh, period or a stop. Those are examples of principles of friendliness. Because if you pick a speech, and the speech lacks all this, then definitely the speech is not friendly. One other thing about a speech being friendly is that a both a budding speechwriter must ensure that when writing he makes less use of technical words 
Because technical ways are often difficult for the listeners to understand. So if one avoids using technical ways, then one will be able to communicate to uh, the audience. For example, if an expert in agriculture is to address a group of farmers, he will try as much as possible to come down to the level of the farmers. He will abstain from using the technical ways often used in agriculture because he has an intention, that is to convey an information to his audience. And he has to avoid the use of technical ways when addressing a group of farmers. People who, have, who are of not the same status or academic background with himself. So a speech must also be reader friendly. And apart from those, two, those uh, ones, when writing a speech, if you want a speech to be reader friendly, one will expect that the title, all instances of proper nouns are put in capsule letters. Make sure all titles within the speech, all proper nouns within the speech are in proper nouns. And that is by capitalizing them. For example, in the same speech, we are talking about, that is speech six. Uh, you have federal constitution of Nigeria in paragraph four. Federal constitution of Nigeria. I expect every one of you to be armed with this text. Federal constitution of Nigeria, the F, C, and N, of these three keywords are in capital letters. So when you are even addressing educated audience, all the words that are supposed to be in capital letters must be in capital letters. Because if they are not, whoever is going through will not be happy those words are not properly capitalized. So, um, those letters, rather, those letters are not properly capitalized. And so, such a piece of uh, writing is not reader friendly. Others, other examples you have in that same uh, speech, speech six, that complies with the principle of reader friendliness are federation. Wherever you find the word federation in the passage, you find it starting uh, with capital letter F. Africans, northern region. Africans begins with capital letter A, northern region, capital letter N, and R. All this, by the time a, a, a speech writer take this into cognizance and does the proper thing from the beginning of the speech to the end, we say that speech is reader friendly. Then apart from that, we also have the principle of accuracy. When writing a speech, one must be very sure of the facts and names of persons and places one mentions in the speech. For example, if one wants to mention, if one has a cause to mention Barack Obama, the correct spelling for Barack is not the usual spelling you have for Barack 
where soldiers stay. It has a single R. Capital letter B, A, R, A, C, K for Barak. So when you want to write a speech, you must be very sure you have the correct spelling of whatever information you want to pass across to those who have copies of your speech. Because by the time they are reading and they discover that you've missed the, the, the spelling of Barack, whoever is a, a familiar with the name of Barack Obama will circulate to tell you the spelling is not correct. You want to write Ojuku, for example. Ojuku is O J U K W U U. You cannot write it as Ojuku O J U K U just because you just want to write it for the sake of writing. Anything you want to write must be correct. Whatever you want to write. If you are citing figures, the figure must also be correct. Whoever is reading the figure must not begin to, uh, must not start to query the figure that this figure is correct. It's inappropriate. So, whatever, that's what we mean by the principle of accuracy. Now, and again, if you look at the passage we are looking at in this, we are examining for this uh, period. You have since 1957, that's about the sixth paragraph. In the sixth paragraph, you have since 1957, our thoughts, we are interested in the year itself. As your, he's not speculating. He's quite sure of the year he has started fighting for politically in Nigeria, fighting for the progress of the nation. And so he was specific by mentioning the year. Besides that, so if you want to examine the text as a scholar, as a Buddhist speechwriter, that is coming up, and you are asked to examine the speech considering all these principles. These are the things we are going to look at. For accuracy, you want to check if the names provided in the speech are correct, if the dates are correct, so that by the time you are writing, you have trained yourself to know that if you are writing anything at all, which is going to be for the consumption of your students or people outside, you must provide them with the correct information about the names of persons, of places, or the dates. Besides that, you also have the principle of due diligence. In this case, what is implies is that whatever word you are going to use, they must be appropriate in the context in which you want to use them. The words you are going to use. Or otherwise, if you are not very careful as a speechwriter, some people will give it another meaning. You must think of the denotative the, the meaning that is the dictionary the ordinary meaning of that word, you must also think of the connotative meaning because a word can have two or more meanings. So you, a, a speech writer, therefore, must be very careful in his choice of words. Otherwise, people will misinterpret whatever uh, you, you have said. So you need to know the meaning of words as I've said, as I've said, both the non-tative or connotative, so that you don't begin to say that uh, you have been misinterpreted. People often these days, uh, when some people 
have made speech. And uh, people are now reading meanings to the speech. They go back to say that is not what they, they mean. That people have, that, that the people are being mischievous by misinterpreting what they have said. So, when delivering a speech, you have to follow the principle of due diligence by ensuring that the words you are going to use, you have a good understanding of those words. You know the meaning and you can use them properly in the context in which you want to use them. So far, that is what uh, we want you to know as far as principles of uh, speech writing is concerned. Kill the guy now. Run the corner. Get him. What? What is this? Good sir. You are watching Jackie Pan in my house. Who is King Kong, sir? Eh? King Kong. You, you've never heard of ACTV before in your life. ACTV is very educative, informative, and there are football sport there. There is entertainment. There are a lot of things you can You can even attend lectures here. All you know is watch all those nonsense artists and do, do nonsense or uh, you watch nonsense on TV. Eh? Last night you almost came in bed with your fist. It's not me, sir. Eh? You, and you wake up every morning, the bed will be so rough, like you've been fighting off your dream. Eh? That's really why you have F's in your course, like but I have, made for you. I have you last semester. E, we eat by pounds on you. Very stupid. Though. We are changing that section to ACTV right now. And oh god, we go to what you first born. Stupid boy. Oh, no,